Bob Good, chairman of the Freedom Caucus, uh, running in his campaign. That'll be decided early voting May 2nd, and then uh, that'll be June 18th as the primary. Congressman Good, thanks for being with us. Great to be with you, John. I'm kicking off my second Freedom Fighters tour this morning. I got the great Tim Burchett from Tennessee, who is one of our eight warriors who replaced the speaker back in October. He's with me kicking off the tour. We'll have Scott Perry from Pennsylvania and Ralph Norman from South Carolina and Jody Heiss from Georgia and Ben Klein from, of course, the 6th District in Virginia, the great Patty Lineman, our, our National Committee woman. So we have another great tour today, tomorrow and Friday. And so tell us about... If people want to go to go and get involved, what's your website for these tours? Where do they go? Yeah, BobGoodForCongress.com. It'll have all the events listed, BobGoodForCongress.com. Okay, so let's get to uh, what's going on in the House. So uh, you pass the three uh, spending bills, another $100 billion, add to the deficit, exasperates it there, open borders. What about the scene? I want you to explain how you felt the scene in the House after you guys passed this $100 billion spending bill uh, Sixty-seven billion dollars for Ukraine, nothing for us, nothing for our border, nothing for working people, and you had many of your colleagues running around cheering, yelling "Ukraine, Ukraine," waving Ukrainian flags with Ukrainian lapel pins, and we can't control the border, and we got veterans starving under bridges. Like, how do you what? what how did you feel? It was a disaster, John, and it really let down the American people. And I, I must point out to the individuals endorsing my opponent, they voted for the Ukraine money. They voted for these spending bills. They voted to borrow this money. And just like they voted to reform, or excuse me, reauthorize FISA without the uh, constitutional reforms that we put in place, they voted against the Warren Amendment two weeks ago. So that's the kind of people support my opponent. You, and how do you think my opponent would vote if he was in Washington, by the way? But, John, we were supposed to leave D.C., Thursday. Typically, we're up there three weeks of the month, Monday to Thursday or Tuesday to Friday. And this past week, we're supposed to be there Monday to Thursday and leave Thursday. We stayed two extra days, John. We stayed through Saturday not to fight for America, not to defend our borders, not to secure our nation, but to borrow, as you said, $95 billion to send overseas to fund Ukraine and some other foreign aid supplemental bills. Again, all of it borrowed. And then to add insult to injury, the $60 billion for Ukraine, $300 million of which were for border personnel for Ukraine. The Israel bill, and I, as you know, John, I'm a, a intense, strong, unapologetic uh, supporter of Israel, but I want it to be paid for, not borrowed from our kids and our grandkids. We begged the Speaker to allow us to pay for it. We did that back in November, and the Democrats wouldn't take it up. They wouldn't vote to, they wouldn't, Chuck Schumer wouldn't support Israel because we were cutting IRS expansion to pay for it, $15 billion. We said, well, let's, let's send something else that maybe the Democrats will take instead, cut in climate or cut in COVID spending or cut UN funding, those kind of things, and pay for it. But not only did we not pay for the Israel aid, when Israel doesn't have $35 trillion in national debt, by the way, like we do, but they added $9 billion for Hamas to the Israel aid package. Why? To buy Democrat votes for the Israel package. So we're funding both sides of the conflict, $15 billion for Israel, $9 billion for Hamas in the same spending bill borrowed from our kids and our grandkids. That's why you had uh, some of us conservatives vote against the Israel bill, not because we don't want to support Israel. Of course we do, but we don't want to borrow it, number one. And number two, we didn't want to add $9 billion for Ukraine. So And then go back to the, the $60 billion for, for Ukraine. Uh, we, the Speaker promised that we would utilize the Ukraine supplemental to leverage border security because the speaker used to be against money for ukraine instead what he did was he wanted the ukraine money just as bad as the democrat so did nearly half of republicans as you saw from the vote and so we had no leverage to require border security and for that matter the ones who really wanted ukraine money mitch mcconnell in the senate speaker johnson in the house and again roughly nearly half republicans about 45 percent of republicans they didn't want to gum it up or slow it down or put it at risk by tying it to border security. So we failed the American people, but at least we showed, John, that 101 Republicans voted for the Ukraine aid, 112 voted against it. That was progress, that, 100, that 112 Republicans were willing to vote against leadership, vote against the Ukraine money. Uh, and But Democrats voted for it 210 to zero. But John, I want to, you, you mentioned the speaker situation from last year versus this year. Don't forget about one benefit of re removing the previous speaker. There's been, what, 20-something retirements 
from McCarthy allies who don't want to serve in Congress anymore because of the changes that we're forcing upon Congress. They don't like the fact that we're not going along to get along, that we're not joining hands with the Democrats on everything. And, and they, they, they don't like that we're exposing them to their voters. They didn't want to face their voters in the primaries. So, John, we've got to change Washington by changing the people who are in Washington. That's why I'm endorsing in these primary races, trying to help elect more Freedom Caucus fighters to join the Freedom Caucus with me and, and trying to take out people like Tony Gonzalez in Texas and Dan Newhouse in Washington and William Timmons in South Carolina and Carol Miller in West Virginia and Don Bacon in Nebraska. We're going to beat them in the primaries and then win the open seats with Freedom Caucus fighters because we've got to change who's in Congress so that we can change what Congress does. Let President Trump win back the Senate, but change the House majority to a, to more courageous conservative fighters who won't vote for the stuff that passed with Democrat votes this past week. Again, people like those who are supporting my opponent. That's why he doesn't bring him to the district, by the way. He does his fundraising up in northern Virginia with them. He won't bring him to the district to campaign with him because that would further expose that he's working with moderate establishment rhinos to, to, uh, to replace me, he's trying, because uh, he doesn't stand for the things that we stand for. Congressman Bob Good with us, uh, Republican 5th District, Virginia, also chairman of the Freedom Caucus, also in a primary battle being opposed by uh, State Senator John McGuire. 5th District, that runs from Danville, Southside, all the way to Chesterfield. That'll be decided June 18th. Primary, two people in it. And uh, early voting starts May 2nd. Bob Good, um, Tony Gonzalez, you heard what he said the other day about us? Called us scumbags. Mm -hmm. what, was your, us what was your reaction to that? What? Well, Tony Gonzalez is going to lose to Brandon Herrera. Uh, Matt Gates and I are leading the fight and the endorsements against him. He's going to lose. Uh, finally, the people of the Texas 23rd District are going to be relieved of one of the worst moderate rhinos uh, who, frankly, it's a border district, 800 miles of border, and he has fought border security. He has literally fought border security. He was the Republican who blocked Chip Roy's border bill last year, uh, the only Republican who was against it. So he's a disaster. He's a rhino. Uh, and, and you can see how he responds, just like Democrats. So because Matt Gates and I and some others have endorsed against him, he plays the race card just like Democrats. He, he says, hey, we're scumbags. He attacks Matt Gates personally. He says that we're essentially said he said we're KKK. He said, you know, we're, we're, we're wearing the white hoods, but we're just doing it in the daytime instead of at night. So the people in this district are suing who he is. Uh, he's going to lose. We're going to replace him in the May primary. I forget the exact date of which one, which date is. I think it's May 21 or May 28. Uh, but that's, this is a desperation. It's just like my opponent. They know that they're in trouble. So they try the smears and the personal attacks and the lies. Uh, they campaign like Democrats because they'll vote like Democrats. This uh, this nine billion dollars that you guys gave to uh, Hamas, what what in what form did that go in? Are they calling it aid? Like how is it getting? How do you? Yes, how do you they're give calling it dollars to Hamas. John, they're calling it, and and of course I voted against it, obviously, but they're calling it humanitarian aid to Gaza. But John, who controls Gaza? Who's the elected government of Gaza? That is Hamas. To suggest that you're going to send money into Gaza and it's not going to fall into the hands of Hamas and, and, and relieve the terrorists instead of the people. These are people, these are terrorists who use the people as human shields, who hide behind hospitals and schools and mosques uh, to protect their, their military installations, if you will, their military operations, their terrorist operations. Uh, and they, they, they put their stuff underground underneath these, uh, these, uh, Again, hospitals, uh, mosques, and, and, and schools, they use women and children as human shields. Uh, and, and we're going to send $9 billion to them while we're trying to fund Israel's ability or help Israel with their ability to finish this conflict and to eliminate the threat within their own borders. Unbelievable. Um, let's get Unbelievable. To we only, Unbelievable. We only, got, we only got a couple more minutes. I, I know you have an event. Um, I want to get your take on these pro-Palestinian encampments on universities like yes. Columbia University in New York. Uh, Bob, what are your thoughts on that, and what are we doing about it? Well, John, as you know, I'm on the Education Workforce Committee, and so I've been able to be, uh, help with the hearings that we've had with the presidents of these left-wing universities that are indoctrinating our kids. First of all, they're, they're bringing kids in who obviously believe this stuff, and then they're indoctrinating those kids. The professors are compromised. The faculty's compromised. The, the, the schools are compromised, and why we would spend, you know, 
thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars to have the left change what our kids think. Uh, Americans across the country need to wake up and say, hey, we're not going to pay the left to indoctrinate our kids with this anti-American ideology. But when I was talking to the president of Columbia in the hearing that we had last week, I said, what does it say about your university that this is happening on your campus? Have you ever had pro uh, have you ever had a, a, a counter demonstration that was anti-Islam, that was anti-Muslim, that was anti these Middle East? Of course not. It's all one-sided. It's only Israel who, when they're attacked viciously, becomes the enemy to the UN, becomes the enemy to the Biden administration. Uh, it's only Jews when they are attacked, uh, obviously for ethnic racial reasons, that somehow they are the oppressors and they're blamed for what happens. Uh, it's, all, it's only anti-Semitism that's tolerated on these campuses. Uh, it says a lot about our universities. It says a lot about our blue cities right now. It says a lot about what we're allowing into our country with the border invasion, quite frankly. Uh, and, and it says a lot about, again, these college administrators. These prof- You had professors, John, faculty trying to you know, build a human shield around the protesters, the demonstrators, quite frankly, the riots. John, but this is a preview. This is just a glimpse, a preview of what's to come with the border invasion, the, the 10 million illegals that we know about, not vetted, a couple of them, these gotaways with the terrorist ties, the criminal backgrounds, and the gang members and trafficking things into our country, the children, the women, and the drugs and all. This is, this is what our future looks like on a much higher scale, a much more violent scale in the future because of Biden's border invasion. But you know, these, these presidents need to resign. These presidents need to be fired. These board members need to be replaced. Um, And we ought not to allow federal funds to flow to these universities that tolerate, not only just tolerate, but in many cases encourage these pro-terrorist, pro-Hamas demonstrations, these anti-Israel, anti-Semitic demonstrations with your tax dollars. They've got their multi-billion dollar donations while they're, or endowments rather, while they're raising tuition to exorbitant rates, they're doing it with federal dollars, and they're tolerating this on their campus, if not encouraging it on their campuses. You know, what you just said is uh, this is only an appetizer of what we're going to get, right? Because when these illegals are in these cities, like we just had a guest on Laura Luma earlier that was, um, that was subjected to uh, an assault by illegals, and she said there was a whole gang there, and they're all you know, speaking in Spanish and you know, chanting uh, whatever, and like two police officers came and I mean, they were at risk because there were two of them and there were 50 illegals and they know nothing's going to happen to them. They're not going to get deported. They're not going to get arrested. If they are, they get let out in a minute. There's a sanctuary city. So you basically have a completely lawless situation with these people coming in that don't and, feel any affinity to the laws or, or anything that we have. And so they, they just do what they want. It's incredible. That's right, John. And let's remind everyone, we are a nation of legal, lawful immigration in the sense that we allow a million a year who earn their citizenship, pledge their allegiance, demonstrate they're going to make us stronger. They come from all over the world, from Africa, from South America, from Asia and Europe and so forth. And we're the most generous country in the world in that respect. But that is totally different than the illegal invasion at the border being perpetrated by the Democrats and Joe Biden, which has done irreparable harm to our country. Thanks, John, for being in the fight. Thanks for having me again. Hey, Bob, website, what is it? BobGoodForCongress.com, good.house.gov. Thanks, and John. And got, you've got three days of events, right? Today, That's tomorrow, right, three Friday. days. Today, tomorrow, and Friday. All right, BobGoodForCongress.com. Bob, thanks for being with us.